Stephanie Dobson is back with us here this week. Stephanie is a lawyer and mediator at Hanka Divorce Law and Mediation here in Lloydminster. This is another episode of Healthy Thriving Family After Divorce. Stephanie, last week we had a chance to dig in a little bit uh, to talk about the employment pension plans. So if anybody didn't get a chance to see that, can you just recap some of the things that we went over? Yeah, you know, Stacey, there's so many aspects to this and I just, there's a few more points that I thought would be really helpful for our viewers. So um, first, let's do just a really quick recap. And even if people did see it last week, it's so complicated. Let's let's dig right in. So uh, we went over last week, there's two different kinds of pension plans for employment pensions. One is called a defined benefit pension plan. And this is the formula based pension. The defined contribution pension plan is a pension plan more like an RSP where it's contributions made during a period of employment and then interest earned, which creates the value for the pension. We also talked then about the how to value pensions and then also the importance about getting that pension value estimate from your pension administrator. Well, let's talk about that now, Stephanie. So once you've received the pension value estimate, what is the next step? So when you get that uh, that document, there's going to be a pension value right on the form. It might have different wording depending on what pension uh, plan that you're under. One, it could be called a total entitlement. It could be called commuted value. There's a variety of different wordings. Now, the number on the form is not necessarily the value of the pension, so we can't just stop there. It's the pension administrator's estimate of the value based on certain criteria and, and assumptions that they make. It has nothing to do with that individual member circumstances. My recommendation is always to, uh, to get a pension actuary involved, and that's a person who has a particular expertise in valuing pensions, and they take not only the assumptions that the pension administrator made, <clears throat> excuse me, but they also take the individual member circumstances. So that's a more reliable way to determine the value of a pension for the purpose of division of family property. Stephanie, are there any restrictions on dividing pensions between spouses? Well, there's a couple of restrictions that former couples are going to want to consider before finalizing their agreement. Um, so the first one is the maximum amount that can be transferred to a spouse from, one, for, from the member spouse to the former spouse. Uh, according to the applicable legislation. And then the second one is the way that the pension division can occur. So there's not just, it's not just whatever the spouses want to happen can happen. There's some rules and restrictions around it. So let's first talk about that maximum transfer issue. So for that defined contribution plan, uh, that's a simple one, of course. So typically any amount that spouses want to transfer from the member to the former spouse, uh, typically that's allowed, so up to 100%. However, for the more complicated one, the defined benefit pension plan, it's going to depend on the legislation under which that pension plan is regulated. So it could be 50% that's allowable, it could be 100%, but it really will just depend and it's important to know the legislation that you're dealing with. Now that second limitation is how the transfer itself actually occurs. So let's go with the simple one first, defined contribution pension plan. So this is um, typically the spouse who receives the funds the non-member spouse who will receive the month funds usually receive that by way of a locked in retirement account. People might know that as a lira. So that's where you get a lump sum that you can transfer to a financial institution of your choice. For a defined benefit pension plan, of course, it's, it's always more complicated when we have those ones. So it's going to depend on those pension rules again. So some pensions allow the former member to choose between whether they get that lump sum or whether they actually become what's called a limited member of the pension plan itself, and then they can receive that monthly pension income when retirement occurs. So of course, so much involved, valuation, division, uh, how do you work with these pensions? It's always um, really important to get uh, some really good advice really early on so that you're making the best decisions that you can. Okay, Stephanie, and as you said, there is obviously a lot of information on this subject. If people are looking to have it maybe broken down for them or they have questions, what's the best way to reach you, Stephanie? Sure, it's always a good idea to take a look at our website, Henka Divorce, H-E-N-K-A, divorce.ca. Uh, lots of great information about the kind of services that we offer, and then they can always call our office a simple way, 780-875-2234. Um, All right, Stephanie, well, thank you so much, and we'll be back to chat with you next week. Yeah, thanks, Stacey.